Hello people, what's up? How is everyone doing? I hope that all of you guys are doing good and your preparations are going well. My name is Arup and welcome back to the Sprint Tech series of ICAC 10th. Today we'll be ta talking about yet another chapter, yet another amazing chapter that is refraction through our lens. We'll be ta solving 10 amazing questions from this particular chapter. So before we get started, I'm gonna leave you 30 seconds. Make sure that you get your pens and papers ready so that we can start with this particular chapter, all right? So everyone try to solve the questions with me. It'll be a good practice for you guys. So what I want you guys to do is very simple. Pause the video if you need more time to solve the question, but I want you to do it with me guys. So there will be a lot of ray diagrams that we'll be solving in this particular chapter. Even uh, refraction uh, through a plane surface as well. We've seen that you know, there's a lot, lot of ray diagrams involved. Here also there are a lot of ray diagrams involved. So make sure that you, uh, if you have to do it roughly, it's okay, but make sure that you do it with me because the more you practice, the better you get at these ray diagrams so without wasting any time welcome to the session and let's begin right so what are the topics that we'll be doing in today's session is basically lenses and their components refraction through a lens and its focus action of lens is a set of prism and principal rays of ray diagram ray diagram of concave and convex lens a sign convention lens formula magnification of lens power of lens and its application but before you get started guys so let me just show you the entire schedule of what we'll be doing in the next uh, you know next what 20 days uh, not even 20 days yeah next 15 days whatever is there barely 15 days whatever is there so the sprint tech series right now as you guys already know we are in this particular chapter that is refraction through a lens uh, we have already done uh, you know all of these chapters that is force work power energy machines if you haven't checked those videos out make sure you check that out as well people so next session i'll be off sprint text i'll be coming around uh, it'll be coming out on uh, uh, 17th of feb so two days from now your spectrum chapter would also be coming out so make sure that you subscribe to the channel guys because there'll be a lot of videos coming out like this so make sure that you are uh, hitting that bell icon and also subscribe to the channel right so biology is taken up by ambika ma'am it'll, it'll it has already started again uh, right now i believe she's in transpiration it will go on till uh endocrine system chemistry is taken up by anubhavam uh, I, I believe right now she's uh, in analytic chemistry which will be coming out today again and it'll go on all, all the way till 27th of feb again organic chemistry uh Shridham, uh is in uh after blahing chapter and it'll go on again till 27th of feb where that is my greatest olympic prize then uh, Ankara ma'am taking up SST. She's, I believe, in the union executive. That will begin coming out today at 9 p.m. So check out for that as well. Uh, the, the whole schedule will be given up in your community page as well. So you can check that out. Don't worry about it. You'll get it. And when you download the notes as well, you can get those, uh, you know, you can get all these uh, schedules. So don't worry about that as well. It'll go over all the way to interpretation of topographical maps till 27th of Feb. Math. Uh, so uh, Gopal is taking up the sessions. It'll be uh, it is, right now. He's in arithmetic progression, uh, which will be again coming out today at 7 p.m. and it'll go on all the way till 26th of Feb. That is probability, right? So these, this is the entire schedule. I hope you guys are as excited as we are in taking up these chapters. You know, in uh, helping you revise these amazing chapters as well guys so again before we get started do not forget to hit the like button do not forget to hit the subscribe button do not forget to hit the bell icon because there's a lot of fun content coming out for you guys so make sure that you are uh you know tuned in right so that's it let's begin with the very first question but before yeah the very first question is actually a homework question which we had given in the last uh session that is refraction through a plane surface or refraction of light through a plane surface so this was basically the question uh, light passes through a rectangular glass slab and through a triangular glass prism in what way does the direction of two emergent beams differ and why do they differ it's a board exam 2014 question uh, it was a homework question that I had given to you guys. The answer to this quest question is very, uh, quite simple. Uh, in a, rect a rectangular glass slab, the refraction of light uh, or the emergent ray is such a way that it's actually going to be laterally displaced and also more importantly, it's going to be parallel to the incident ray. Whereas if we talk about the rectangular glass prism, uh, it's not going to be parallel, that's for sure. Uh, but more importantly, the ray of light would bend towards the base of the Prism. Now, the reason why is again in the rectangular glass lab, the uh, the the you know uh, uh, what to say uh, or the 
the refraction of light that happens over there is uh, quite different it's not like you know uh, what to say you, you cannot uh, how do you say it it's not like uh, the ray of light is actually falling on a flat surface it's, it's falling on a flat surface that is you know the the surface of a, uh, of a rectangular glass lamp <coughs> is basically uh, this is how it looks like but so uh, you know because of this it's going to be laterally displaced whereas in the case of a you know triangular prism it's basically a triangle so the surface is going to be uh, you know it's going to be at an angle so because of that the ray of light would actually get a refract in such a way that it will go towards the base of the prism right so yeah people that is the answer and these are the homework rockers we have uh rifat who was the fastest to answer congratulations buddy awesome you know bargavi as always thanks a lot kiddo aditya as well absolutely wonderful guys if you want your name to be your next time make sure that you answer today's quest question not the quest question sorry the homework question in the comment section as soon as the question is out right so that's it people i hope you guys are ready i gave you more than 30 seconds as as i promised so let's begin with the very first question back to back we'll try to solve as many questions as possible as fast and as efficient as possible so the first question is taken up from 2018 board exam it's a two mark question you can take up to 2 3 minutes in your board exams but we'll try to do it in one okay we'll try to do it as fast as possible now because there are a lot of ray diagrams it might take a little long for me because my drawing skills are uh, picasso levels so uh, uh, you know it, it's it's a little uh, difficult right so to draw simple diagrams like this it is so this is the first question and by the way that was a joke the first question is this uh state the position of an object in front of a converging uh, lens if it produces a real and same size uh, of same size image as that of the object and it is a uh, uh, subsection 2 is that it is used as a magnifying lens so where are the image or where the objects put up in these cases when you want to produce a real image which is the same size as the other the object and when you're using it as a magnifying glass so this is the option these are the uh, uh what's options that you have first option says that it's uh, the for the first one is it the object is placed between f and 2f and the uh, for the second one it's uh, object is kept at 2f at f at 2f between f and 2f at infinity 2f between f and 2f right now what do you think is the answer for this question i'll give you 3 seconds you guys can pause the video in those 3 seconds and try to do it try to you know draw the ray diagram if you're not able to figure it out but let's try to do this guys in 3 2 1 trust me guys it doesn't take more than 30 seconds to solve this question for the first part of the question the object is placed if you want a real if you want a real image of the same size then definitely you have to place the object at 2f itself at 2f1 basically if you are able to keep the object at 2f1 so uh, i'll try to draw the ray diagrams also for you guys so that you know you get an idea of what i'm talking about so let's say this is f1 this is f2 now again guys like i told you my drawing skills are really bad so i'll try to make it as as clear as possible by but then again uh, please uh, do a uh, one ray of light the parallel to the principal axis will pass through the focus one more ray of light will pass through the optic center and basically they'll both meet at 2f itself now for the second part of the question when you want to use it as a magnifying lens where do you place the object you will place it between the focus and the pole that is where you basically for a magnifying glass that is where you place the object so if you have uh, you know this is the converging lens again so it's a convex lens basically so let's say that this is f this is 2f1 f1 this is f2 and 2f2 now like again uh, to draw the ray ray diagrams it might be a little hard so yeah one ray of light parallel to the principal axis will pass through the focus one more ray of light would be passing through the optic center again they look like they're diverging away so what will happen is that basically what you're getting is basically a virtual image of the same which is much more enlarged that's why we have you know uh, in a magnifying glass we have a large we have an enlarged image which is erect and it's also virtual why because in a magnifying glass the object is placed between the focus and the pole of the lens so here actually the option is wrong it should not be between f and 2f it's actually uh, it is supposed to be f and pole it cannot be 2f it has to be the pole uh, it you know if that is the case then 
uh, you know the object is going to be a real uh, you know the image is sorry the image is going to be a real image and it would have been inverted but in a magnifying glass what you see is an erect image right so it cannot be of it cannot be f uh, 2f it'll be at the pole all right so please guys make sure that you ignore this mistake but that is the answer for the first question right moving on to the second question now from now on i'm not going to take so much time to explain the questions because i know that you guys already know about it so i'm going to you know rush it up a little because we are trying to solve the question in one minute so i'll try to do it as soon as possible all right so second question taken up from 2018 board exam again two marks two to three minutes in your exams we'll try to do it in less than one the question is this. Now, I want everyone to do it with me. Pause the video. Try the question out for yourself. The question is, an object AB is placed between O and F1. That is the optic center and the focal, the first uh, focal length, uh, the, uh, the first, uh, the focal point on the principal axis of converging lens as shown in the figure, uh, as shown in the diagram. Copy the diagram uh, by using three standard rays from point A. Obtain an image of object a b it's exactly the same thing that we just did right now so it's a converging lens again so it's going to be a convex lens so what is it going to be like one ray of light would pass through the focus something like this one more ray of light would pass through the optic center like this so they are both diverging away from each other do not forget to draw the arrow mark as well depicting the direction of the ray of light now try to uh, extend this so what you are actually getting is basically a virtual image which is much more larger than the object now i don't think that took more that took about a minute so that would be the answer for this question is that's it voila one minute two mark yeah it's all yours now again guys please remember those three incident rays one a ray of light which is parallel to the the ray of light passing through the principal uh, passing parallel to the principal axis where after refraction will pass through the focus second is that the ray of light that is passing through the optic center passes through undeviated if a ray of light is passing through the focus then after refraction it will become parallel to the principal axis these are the three standard incident rays just by using the first two you can draw any ray diagram so don't buy heart it practice it by yourself use the logic and try to do it all right don't by heart those ray diagrams that can get super confusing try to you know do it by yourself all right another exam another question again taken from two, 2018 just think about it guys three questions that's six marks from 2018 alone from the same exact chapter so you can understand how important the chapter is right so here's the question guys again two marks two to three minutes we'll try to do it in one the power of the lens is given as minus 5d diopter find its focal length and find the type of the lens i'll trust me it's, it takes less than one minute all right so focal length uh, p is equal to power of the length is equal to one by five or one by focal length right so power is equal to one minus five is equal to one by f so f is equal to one by minus five which is nothing but 0 0.2 or minus 0 0.2 meters because it's diopter diopters you what you're getting it is focal length in terms of meters now convert that to centimeters because the option is given in centimeters or the answer is given in centimeters so divided by 100 so that's 20 centimeter minus 20 centimeter actually is a focal length now what is the type of lens this is an interesting question now here's the thing guys if the focal length is negative then it's going to be a concave lens now never ever ever forget this why is it negative because according to sign convention if you remember this is positive anything on the left hand side is going to be negative anything on the sorry anything, yeah, anything on the left hand side is negative anything on the right hand side is positive anything above the principal axis is positive anything below the principal axis is negative now in a concave lens a focal lens is always going to be on the same side of the lens so it's going to be negative remember this never forget this. this is one thing that you should never get confused all right so then if the focal length you're going to get is minus 20 centimeter so it's going to be a concave lens that's it guys that is the answer option three is definitely the correct answer for this question no doubts all right i hope you got this right because if you didn't it's all right make sure that you remember this all right moving on to the fourth question guys we are ha almost halfway through here's the fourth quest fourth question again this, this, this time 2017 board exam two mark again two to three uh, minutes we'll try to do it in less than one the question is an object is placed at a distance of 12 centimeter from a convex lens or focal length eight centimeter Find the position of the image and find the nature of the image. You know the lens formula, guys. Use the lens formula. It's a direct substitution formula. 1 by V is equal to 1 by U minus... Uh, 1 by V minus 1 by U is equal to 1 by F. So what you're supposed to find is 1 by V uh, minus... Okay, because 
is okay we'll just write down so that you avoid confusions minus 1 by uh, it's given as 12 centimeters and object distance always minus so it's going to be minus 12 again which is equal to 1 by f 1 by f is nothing but 8 so uh, here 1 by v is equal to 1 by 8 plus uh, 1 by minus 12 so yeah find out the lcm uh, 8 uh, 8424 I don't know Wait, ha, eight three twenty four, right? Ha, eight, wow, uh, twelve two twenty four, right? So that's three uh, minus two whole divided by twenty four, which is nothing but one by twenty four. So V is equal to twenty four centimeters. Wow. Now, just by looking at this, there are two things that you can see. Because the value of V is positive, the image is definitely on the other side of the lens or behind the lens. You can see. So the image is going to be a uh, I can say it's a real image. It is. Uh, it is okay. If you want to check if it's inverted or if it is, uh, a, uh, I don't know if it's inverted or right. For that, you'll have to find the magnification. So if you want to find the magnification, go ahead and do that as well. So m is equal to v by use the formula. So v is 24. M. Uh, this is 12. So you get as minus 2. So that means that the image is going to be magnified. All right. It's going to be magnified and it's inverted as well. That's a real magnified inverted would be the nature of the image. Easy to mark, guys. I might have taken more than one minute to uh, to explain and solve it, but yes, you get the idea, guys. One minute, 30 seconds, so something about around that time. So yeah, that would be the answer for this question. So here, okay, they've not uh, they've not gone that one step ahead and found the magnification. Again, that's totally up to you guys. But if they if you want to, it's it's up to you. They're not going to deduct marks for that minute nonetheless so the answer is going to be option number yeah a it's going to be 24 centimeter and it's real and inverted that's it voila that is the answer moving on to the next question but let's take a break guys let's take a break give me uh you know we'll take a one minute break now guys if you're enjoying this session first of all don't forget to hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to the channel that, that's all set now, if you want to take up more sessions like this, if you want to, you know, uh, be a part of us and learn from the best of the best teachers, gain 100% knowledge, gain 100% marks, do good in your studies and also, you know, uh, want to have some fun along with that, all you have to do is click on the link that is given in the description as well as the pin comment section. Now, before you get on the click, before you close the video, before you click on the link, let me tell you why Vedantu is... Uh, booming so much why is Vedantu uh, you know getting so much traction first first of all is you have unlimited live session you don't have any limit there's no one setting up a limit as to you have to attend only so many sessions in a day there's nothing like that you can attend 20 30 sessions totally up to you guys it's up to you I know that 20 30 sessions is just is, it's like a, a, a outrageous number but if you want to you have you have the choice to attend unlimited live sessions and all of those sessions would be fun filled it will be interactive you get to talk to the teacher you can talk to your friends you can ask doubts everything it will be just like how you are in a real classroom with those questions with those you know concepts that you'll be studying you'll also be having unlimited number of quizzes as well those quizzes would be you know well thought out well asked questions well put up questions which will not only help you to test your ability of how much you've understood the concept but also it gives you an opportunity to compete with your friends with your colleagues around the globe and see how good you are in that particular subject so you're improving yourself every single day and apart from this case, let's say you miss out a session because that's obvious. Twin, because live sessions are going on 24-7. Now it's not possible for us to attend 24 sessions, 24 hours or 24 sessions in a day. That's outrageous. Nobody can do that. Alright? None of you none of us can do that. Not, not including me. Definitely not. Now, let's say you miss out a session. Don't worry. Because even if you miss out a session, you can still take the quizzes while you're watching the replay. You can still check out the leaderboard and still see how good you would have been if you were to attend that particular session. So you never miss out on anything that is important. And you can watch every single record, download every single notes, handwritten notes, every comma, every dot, everything that is important 
all of that can be downloaded viewed and you know uh, may you can make notes out of it do whatever you want with it but again we are providing you all the tools that is necessary for your success with this case with this the live sessions will not just have one teacher no with the master teacher you will also have the class teacher who will help you to clear every single doubt inside the session right there and then you have 50 doubts 100 doubt 150 doubt it does not matter all your doubts will be cleared right there and then itself so again every tool that is necessary for your success and yes for all those who are looking around for questions to solve to be better every single day you don't have to go anywhere for that as, as, as well as because we have some amazing tests and assignments planned for you which will not only test your limits but will also help you gain you know amazing knowledge on that particular subject because those tests the questions that are that is taken you know that is given to those tests are taken up from from your previous year question papers from your sample papers every source of question which would help you to you know challenge yourself those kind of questions are what is taught what is uh, you know what is given in these tests and assignments so you have an opportunity to make yourself better every day with all of these just like a sprinkle of chocolate on top of all of these 5000 plus micro courses and crash courses for free all you have to do is click on the link that is given in the description and guess what guys because we got an amazing response for the valentine's day offer we have decided to extend that offer for the next couple of days more in fact what is happening is that you're getting a flat 50 percent discount of up to 1500 rupees off on the courses that are going on right now so let me tell you what that means if you go for the one month program the base price of that is around 2600 which is a lot of money i understand that but if you use the coupon code ame pro you get a flat 50 percent discount on that 2699 rupees and the price comes down to 1349 rupees and this is valid only for the next couple of days it'll get over maybe by tomorrow i believe tomorrow day for tomorrow so you have a very limited a very amazing opportunity to learn with the best of the best teachers once again and make yourself give that push that you need to you know to get better right so again uh just think about it guys in terms of value for, value for money just think about it for a second in that two you know in that uh one month duration you would have attended a minimum of 200 sessions that means that per session if you think about it, you're paying just 6.7 rupees that is way 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 less than the 10 rupees packet of lays that you buy and spend five minutes to eat right so again a uh, good opportunity an amazing opportunity link in the description and in the comment section as well the coupon code is AME, ame pro to avail the discount and it's going to be valid only for the next couple of days so make sure that you avail the discount again it will be 50 percent off on up to 1500 rupees it's going to be limited uh, it's going to be a limited time offer so make sure that you enroll in as soon as possible right anyways with that out of the picture let's get back into the topic people we are on to the fifth question right now taken up from 2019 board exam i know that it's it's a uh, it's a little uh, clumsy there but still it's taken up from 2019 question paper again board exam three mark question you can take up to three to five minutes in your exams what are you do it in two right the question is this a virtual diminished image is formed when an object is placed between the optic center and the principal focus of a lens. Name the type of lens which, with lens which forms the above image. Draw a ray diagram to show the formation of the image with the above characteristics. All right. A virtual diminished image. This is the key word. Virtual diminished image. Trust me, it doesn't take it doesn't take a shell lock to answer this question it is definitely going to be a concave lens remember this guys in a concave lens you're always going to get a virtual image which is diminished in a convex lens you'll get a virtual you can get a virtual image if it's placed very close that is between the focus and the uh, and the uh, and the optic center but then the most the most important thing is that 
the image that is formed is going to be virtual and enlarged not diminished and hence the right answer is concave lens now to draw the ray diagram it's a concave lens so basically uh if you're placing uh Okay, you are okay so no matter where you place the object it's going to be the same so let me just try to do it as soon as possible f1 uh this is 2 f1 this is f2 this is 2 f2 right uh yes so let's say the object is placed somewhere over here one ray of light panel the principal axis uh, will appear to pass through the focus one more ray of light passing through the optic center and the image is going to be formed between the focus and the pole and as you as you bring the object closer and closer the image size will also get a little bigger and bigger but yeah again it's never going to be bigger than the object itself right so that would be the answer people that would be the answer for this particular question i believe you got it this would be the uh, ray diagram again uh, here they've kept the object between the focus and the optic center but you can keep it anywhere because you're always going to get a, a diminished and virtual image right yeah i'm not well guys my nose is all blocked that's why all right here's another question taken up from 2017 board exam three mark question three to five minutes two minutes let's try to solve this the question is this do it with me pause the video if you have to but read the question and solve it with me. a lens forms an upright and diminished image of an object when an object is placed at the focal length of the lens name the lens and draw a ray diagram to show the image formed it's an upright image that means it's an erect image and it's going to be diminished as well name uh, if, even if it's placed in the focus the answer is definitely yes it's again a concave lens etc because again if you were to see if it's a convex lens if you were to keep the object in the focus the image would have been uh, formed at infinity right and more importantly it's a real image because we are assuming that the rays of light are you know meeting at infinity so it's going to be a real image but in the case of concave lens wherever you keep the object it's going to be the same so once again it's the same thing ray diagram yeah same old same old ray diagram so this time we have to make sure the object is kept at the focus itself so f1 f2 uh 2 f1 and 2 f2 so if the object is placed at the focus uh one ray of light again uh passing it'll appear like it's passing through the focus itself again one more ray of light will pass through the optic center and the object is play again formed between the focus and the optic center so yeah that would be the answer for this question once again diminished once again virtual and once again erect. right so that is the answer I, I don't think i took two minutes also to solve the same question now again guys uh you, when you're doing it in the exam you might take a little longer to draw the ray diagrams because you're doing right now i'm just doing it roughly uh, uh my diagrams are hopelessly bad first of all but yes uh you know it might take a little longer that's why it, you know the safe time is given to you the safe space between three to five minutes is like an optimal amount of time for you to do it slowly and correctly right moving on to the seventh question we are almost done guys but all those who are still who are a little bored and getting sleepy wake up we're almost done this is a good practice so moving on to the next question to the 15 board exam seventh question again that's a four mark question you can take roughly about four to seven minutes in your exams we'll try to do it in less than three the question is where should an object be placed so that a real and inverted image of the same size as that of the object is obtained using a convex lens draw a ray diagram to show the formation of the image specified in part number one you know the answer to this question. This is probably one of the most obvious answers. The object should be placed at 2F1 in order to get an object which is real and inverted and the same size as that of the object. So what would be the ray diagram? So it's a convex lens. You have the principal axis. Uh, this is your F1. This is F2. 2F1 and 2F2. So the object is placed at 2F, one ray of light par uh, parallel of the principal axis passing through the focus, one more ray of light passing through the focus, uh, through the optic center and meeting at 2F. So the image is going to be of the same size. Now again guys, please don't judge my drawings because like I told you, it's like hopelessly bad. So please don't. So let's call this A, let's call this as A dash. So the image is going to be a real inverted and uh, the same size so this is the answer that's it people yeah that is the answer for another question four mark question people it's a four mark question 2015 board exam easy peasy now again guys please stress on your ray diagrams i told you this during the umang series as well 
I'm telling this again now. I'll keep telling this for the rest of my life if I have to. But please, please, please do your read diagrams. It's super duper important. I can't, can't stress it enough. All right, 2019 board exam. All right, eighth question. Four mark, four to seven minutes in your exams. We're trying to do it in less than three. The question is. An object is placed at a distance of 24 cm in that in front of a convex lens or focal length 8 cm. What is the nature of the image formed? Calculate the distance of the image of the lens and calculate the magnification of the lens. Now, to, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all find out the distance of the lens, then try to find out the magnification, and then I'll uh, you know write down the nature of the lens as well. All right. So let's start uh, the nature of the image. Sorry. So let's start with the uh, first uh, second part of the question. First second part of the question. So they've given you what is the uh, object distance is minus 24 centimeter because object is kept always kept on the left hand side. Focus in a convex lens is always positive, so it's going to be 8 centimeter. So remember the formula 1 by V minus of 1 by minus 24 is equal to 1 by 8. So when it goes to the other side, uh, you know, it will become minus again. So minus into minus will be positive. When it goes to the other side again, it will become negative. So 1 by V is equal to 1 by 8 minus 1 by 24. Uh, a 324, a 3. So uh, that's 3 minus 1 divided by 24, which is going to be 2 by 24. So it will be 12. So V is equal to 12 centimeter. So that is your image distance. Now that you know your image distance, find out the magnification. M is equal to V by use the formula. So it's 12 by 24. It's 2. So it's 1 by 2, which is nothing but 0 0.5. Now, so now that you know this, what is the nature of the image? The image. This is the second part of the question, by the way. So the third part of the question. Now to answer the type of image that is formed, it's a real image. Wait a second. It's minus 24, right? Because it's minus 24. The object is so it's minus 0 0.5. It's a real image. It's going to be inverted because it's minus, and it's also going to be diminished. It's not enlarge it's a diminished image 0 0.5 because if you remember if m is less than 1 then it's diminished if it's m is equal to 1 same size m is greater than 1 then it's going to be a uh, enlarged image so we'll love you that is the answer for this question as well and that is it that is your eighth and the final question and by that we have completed yet another sprint text chapter lenses and their confidence refraction through a lens and its focus action of lens is a set of prism ray diagram sign convention power of a lens magnification all of that done done or done that's it this is your homework let me know what is the answer in the comment section it's a very interesting question frankly uh, this question is very fascinating. It's a super duper, super duper question taken from 2012 board exam. The question is this. You're provided with a printed piece of paper. Using this paper, how will you differentiate between a convex lens and a concave lens? It's an amazing question. Try this question for yourself. Let me know what is the answer in the comment section. Let's see who gets it fastest. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, people, do not forget to hit the like button. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Do not forget to hit the bell icon. And yes, the next chapter is going to be Spectrum. So I'll see you guys then. Until the next time we meet, this is Anup. Adios for tonight. The link is given in the description. There's a 50% offer going on. So make sure you click on that link and check out the link as well. That's it from my side. Thank you for joining. Catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.